Thanks so much for joining me on the Slice of Healthcare podcast. How are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. Thanks for coming on the podcast. I'm excited to learn more about your background as well as Wheel. I think it would be great if you could start by telling the audience a little bit about yourself and we'll go from there. Great. Um, so I became passionate about healthcare because I grew up in a rural part of Texas um, and unfortunately went undiagnosed with an autoimmune condition for over 15 years because I only had access to one family medicine doctor. So I interacted with healthcare from a young age, early and often, and I saw the impact it had not only on me, but my family as a whole. So when I started my career, I started in healthcare. I worked um, for companies like Medtronic and a large capital equipment company. Um, and quite frankly, got a pretty, uh, a pretty good view in how slow healthcare was to change and innovate. So I quickly jumped over to tech. Um, I worked at companies like Google, where I started my career in recruiting. And um, then I joined a on-demand delivery startup called Favor Delivery. Um, and that's where I really learned uh, and saw at the high gig economy kind of the future of work. Um, and we scaled that company, um, it was acquired, and then I took a step back and said, you know, what do I really want to do here? And that's where I found telemedicine. And telemedicine for me was where my personal life um, and access to care collided with um, my professional life of recruiting and operations and healthcare and tech. Um, and so I joined a telemedicine company where I was a head of global talent and shared services and tried to solve um, scaling a telemedicine company head on. Um, and that's actually where I came up with the idea of Wheel um, and met my co-founder now, um, who is a health regulatory lawyer there. And we um, left together and started Wheel. Very cool. Yeah. And so you started Wheel. Uh, from what I've read and learned, uh, a little, you were definitely ahead of the curve with viewing telemedicine. I mean, this was all before COVID too, um, of seeing telemedicine and, and the future that it can have within the healthcare space. I'd love if you could tell us a little bit more about what does Wheel do? Uh, why do you do it? And we'll go from there. Yeah, so Wheel makes it really simple for companies to scale their virtual care offerings. So, what that means is we have um, a platform that enables companies to plug in directly and get their kind of end-to-end -end services and tech needed to scale up their services. So we have everything from the regulatory expertise that's built into our tech to the tech-enabled clinical network so that when companies want to get to market quickly, they can just plug into Wheel and we can help them build that. Um, on the other side, we have clinicians. We're a clinician first company, so we bring clinicians into virtual care. We train them on uh, virtual care practices and clinical protocols and guidelines and train them on what we call website manners so that we're making sure that the patients um, that are being seen through virtual care are having a great clinically safe experience. Um, and we allow companies to tap into that and scale kind of their services to all 50 states so that patients like us can have access to high quality, innovative healthcare. Um, and, you know, for us, it's about how do we empower that and empower companies and clinicians to come together to do that. Excellent. And when you say clinicians, what type of clinicians are you working with today? So today we have about 10,000 clinicians in our network. So it's made up of everything from medical doctors to nurse practitioners and physician assistants um, and across a number of specialties. So everything from what we call general practice, which includes our family medicine and internal medicine clinicians, all the way to dermatology and behavioral health clinicians. So a pretty wide spectrum. Um, and, you know, part of our growth strategy is to continue to bring different types of clinicians and help them engage in virtual care 
so that our patients can be taken care of in a number of different ways. So obviously earlier this year, telehealth had a pretty big boost as a result of everything going on with COVID-19. Mm-hmm. How did that affect Wheel? Yeah, like you mentioned, we had this uh, thesis and really a mission that, you know, virtual care was going to be the future of healthcare when we first started. And we saw the inefficiencies that the in-person care system already had. Um, And so we had this thesis and what we brought to market was that, hey, if we kind of put the clinician back at the center of healthcare and enable them to see patients in a way that is efficient, but also meaningful for those patients, we can really kind of deconstruct the infrastructure that has been here historically and kind of remake an entirely different model online. Um, And that goes to kind of all that we we set out to do from the very beginning. And so COVID really didn't change our business model. It in fact solidified it. It solidified that, you know, clinicians want to work in virtual care, but they needed the education and the training to do that. And it solidified that patients, you know, wanted to receive care in this way or needed to receive care virtually. Um, And how you do that is by bringing those two together in a way that is one from a regulatory compliance, it's safe, it's safe clinically, but it also is a meaningful exchange. Um, And so for COVID for us, it was an accelerant for sure. Um, On that mission, it was an accelerant. We brought in over, um, you know, thousands of clinicians. Our our clinician growth grew over a thousand percent um in just two months and so brought in a bunch of different types of clinicians um it accelerated how quickly we could scale other um, companies businesses so um we brought in and developed um kind of covid safe uh clinical guidelines everything from virtual primary care to education and triage around COVID and we stood those up quickly. You know, some of our COVID responses with companies were in 24 hours and we were getting um, our clinicians trained and working in their um, care models so that their patients had clinicians to see when they were coming in. And so COVID for us has been, again, an accelerant in a number of different ways. And I really believe that um, for the industry as a whole, we've innovated more in the last six months than we did in the last 10 years combined. And that's been a really exciting thing to see, not only here from Wheel, but across the industry. Um, And our goal here at Wheel is how do we help those companies who are innovating and bringing really innovative products to market really get out to the masses. Excellent. And uh, super exciting to hear everything that you've built so far. It's exciting to hear how also something like COVID-19 happens, how you've been able to I don't want to say turn it into a positive, but it has been a positive impact for telehealth and the virtual care space as a whole. Sure. Uh, but it's, uh, I 100% agree with you. I've seen a huge amounts of innovation over the last six months that it seems like before we were hitting our heads off of uh, the wall, right? Trying to innovate in, in the healthcare space. And it, it took a pandemic to really take a look at our current processes and, and really start to innovate more than we have in the past. I'd, I'd love to to hear a little bit, Michelle, uh, as we kind of wrap up. What does the future look like uh, heading into the the end of the year? Also beyond four wheel. Yeah, absolutely. So as I mentioned, COVID was really an accelerator for innovation, an accelerator for wheel. You know, when we first looked at telehealth a, a few years ago, it was more urgent care, episodic care. You know, low acuity. Um, type environment. And what we've seen through COVID is the ability for virtual care to touch much more than just the urgent care, you know, birth control, low acuity areas, and move more into chronic care conditions like 
uh, diabetes and COPD, but also different populations. So the aging population um, and elder population engaging with virtual care and how we can um, better treat and take care of patients in their home. Um, so a lot is changing. And what that means for WHEEL um, is really our ability and kind of our goal to service more types of virtual care, not just urgent care and telemedicine, but how do we continue to expand? Um, how do we bring in practices and clinicians to service more longitudinal care, uh, really taking care of patients in the home? That means bringing in diagnostics, lab testing, and remote patient monitoring. Uh, for WHEEL, it means you know different types of clinicians, as I mentioned earlier. Um, we saw in the pandemic as well, um, a big increase in mental health issues and the spotlight on that. So WHEEL is, um, you know, taking an approach to that and how do we get a service and the same infrastructure that we provide for the general practice and our specialty areas into mental health. And so, you know, I think uh, for us, the future is bright. There's a lot to do. Um, we're really excited about it. And, uh, you know, it's about kind of finding the best way to take care of patients at home and empowering clinicians to provide the highest quality of care while doing that. Absolutely. And we thank you for, for everything that you and, and we all have done to better healthcare. I'd love to hear quickly, Michelle, where can people learn more about you and Wheel? Yeah, so you can visit our website. It's just wheel.com. Um, it tells you a lot about what we're doing here at Wheel, both from the clinician and our client partner side. Um, and then, you know, I think uh, learning more about me, I'm available via LinkedIn. So it's just Michelle Davey. I try and respond when I can. So um, please reach out to me there. Thanks so much. Again, Michelle, it's been a pleasure having you on the podcast. Look forward to staying in touch and following the continued process, uh, progress that you've made throughout your career and that we all will continue to, to have moving forward. Thanks for having me, Jared. It was a pleasure. Absolutely.